Hello everyone and welcome to what I am calling the vent. What I hope to call, what I'd like to call this video blog, vlog, podcast, whatever this is going to turn into. I think the vent will be the title and that's because I'm going to vent a little bit about the life. The life of living in a wheelchair. The life of being a quadriplegic. So, my name is Christopher Sotelo. I have lived the last five and a half years as a C6 quadriplegic complete, uh, which means I completely severed my spinal cord when I had my injury. The um, reason I chose to do a video blog podcast uh, is because I've always had the idea that with a lot of the shit that I've lived through, I, I wanted to write a book or I want to I don't know, be in a documentary or do something big with my story because th this doesn't happen to everyone and honestly I have encountered some of the strangest, funniest, weirdest, most hilarious shit over the past five years and these are stories I don't want to forget and they're stories I feel like I could share with the world and uh, people could relate to, people can laugh at, people can make fun of, whatever you want to do with it, I really don't care. I just I like to get it out of my system. So a lot of people might not understand what quadriplegic means or how there's a lot of misconceptions to it. I have a lot of people who want to challenge me on it actually or call me out and say that I'm a paraplegic because I can move my arms or this and that. But the official definition of tetraplegia, quadriplegia is impairments in all four ligaments. <laughs> so both of my legs completely, I don't want to say dead, but they're, they're pretty much dead. And now if you see my, my hands, I'm paralyzed in my fingers and halfway through my arms all the way. It's kind of difficult to show with the jacket on. I should have maybe done a better choice of wardrobe, but if you look at my arm here, all this bottom side is paralyzed straight to these two knuckles right here, and all the top is not. And all the tendons that work your fingers, they run right here on the bottom side of your arm. So those are all paralyzed. So I'm left with these loose little uh, flimsy things for hands. And so it looks like I'm using them to create grip to pick things up, but that's just manipulation of the wrist, and that's called uh, like tenodesis is what it's called. And so you can see how that works. Um, and the other thing that's different between me and a paraplegic is trunk control. Now because my level of injury is so high, but right about here, all the muscles in my back and in my stomach and uh, abdomen, any, anything like that, are no longer working for me. So I spend the entire day constantly trying to keep my posture right because that's one thing I fail terribly at at a daily, hourly, minutely basis. I have horrible posture and I don't know if there's much I'm going to do about it. We'll see what the future holds for it. Anyways, besides that, I have to hold myself up and, and use these muscles and for me to get balance while I'm sitting in my chair, just a little bump or anything like that can knock me out side to side. And it helps with the pushing too. If I was to have more trunk muscles or a lower level of, or yeah, a lower level of injury, I would have more ability to put thrust into whenever I'm pushing my wheels and, and going forward. And so that that's another difference between paraplegics and quadriplegics. Um, and so with that being said, um, I guess I'll go into my story of how I actually became a quadriplegic and paralyzed. So this was um, five and a half years ago. I was a senior at UTSA in San Antonio, if you didn't catch what the SA was for. And uh, I was there, I had worked all day, and a buddy of mine was in town, called me up, and asked if I wanted to go out. Boom, of course I'm going out. I was 21, in my prime, living life. So we went out, we went downtown, and we went to uh, this spot called Pat O'Brien's. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's a great time, we were there, had had some drinks, had a lot of drinks, had some uh, hurricanes, uh, some shots, um, did some dancing, did some piano duel watching, 
Um, I paid twenty dollars to hear uh, "Tiny Dancer" by Elton John played. That was worth every damn penny. I'll tell you that much. Um, so we all get back in the car, everyone who was out downtown, and decide that we're all meeting back up at this girl's house for an after party, get together, whatever you want to call it. And uh, so we did. So we met back up at the house, and when we get there, uh, the question was asked, does anybody want to go swimming? And what does drunk Christopher want to do? Fuck yeah, I want to go swimming. Who doesn't want to go swimming? So I get down in my underwear, which... They were boxer briefs, but they were white. I, I don't know why that I owned a white pair of boxer briefs, but hey, I decided to rock them the night that I went out. So that made for a nice, uh, nice debut for myself, I would, I would say. So I stripped down and I looked at the pool, and it, it was dark. It was, we were, it was a dark backyard. It was, I could tell the pool was small, but I couldn't tell how small. So I knew I didn't want to dive down. I wanted to project outwards, maybe, so save myself from hitting the bottom. And when doing that, I projected outward and I hit the other wall. And when I hit the other wall, I split my head across the top and I shattered out my C6 vertebrae. And uh, that instantly paralyzed me. So I floated up to the top of the water and as I was there, I it, it, it felt like it was the most peaceful moment that I honestly ever had in my life. Like I remember hitting and I'm assuming that this was all the endorphins or whatever it is that is released in your system naturally whenever you have a traumatic injury like that. It, it released instantly and I, it was while I was still underwater so it, it felt damn good. If I could get my hands on some of that I definitely would. So, I hit towards the bottom, I guess it didn't reach my goal like I wanted to, and I'm floating up, and as I'm floating up, I just feel like an angel, I feel like a million bucks floating to the top, and then I get to the top, and that's when I realize I can't fucking move. My arms are not functioning, my legs aren't kicking, and all I can do is sit there, or not even sit there, lay there face down in the water, and shimmy my shoulders, shimmy, shimmy, trying to sh to turn over as I'm taking in water, actively beginning to drown. Um, I had some some really awesome friends pull me out of the water, um, got me on the poolside, and that's when we realized, or they realized, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know when I realized it. I guess I left some blood in the pool, but I had split my head across the top, and and my buddies let me know they weren't aware that I had broke my neck and neither was I. I, I was drunk as shit. Um, I'm on the, the side of the pool bleeding out of the top of my head and my buddy's there and he's, he's kind of combing my hair back you know trying to make sure everything's good and, and I'm freaking out and I said I said hey man am, am I still bleeding you know what's what's going on and he he tells me no 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 you're not bleeding you're fine and then I hear a girl go oh my god there's blood fucking everywhere and I start freaking the fuck out and I'm like dude don't tell me stop lying to me please please what's going on with me it felt like my legs were sticking straight up in the fucking air 90 degree angle but they weren't they were just slowly but surely unprogramming from from my brain through the spinal cord and that's that's how it felt whenever I was just instantly paralyzed and so after that I went to the hospital they did some scans and whatnot, found out my diagnosis. I had my surgery that night. They fused my C6 vertebrae. They fused my C5 vertebrae to my C7. Because I don't have a C6 vertebrae anymore that I'm aware of. I, don't, I think they got rid of it. I, I don't know exactly. Um, and then after that, I spent um, 19 days in ICU. And um, it was 19 days in ICU, then I transferred, that was all in San Antonio, the ICU. I then transferred to Tier Memorial Herman in Houston, Texas. And I spent another six and a half, seven months of inpatient rehab there, which living in the hospital was, ugh, I, I don't even know how to describe how, 
I don't want to say it was shitty because I don't want to knock it. It kind of set me up for the life that I'm living now and, and I'm pretty happy with it, but it was pretty fucking shitty. <laughs> so, I mean, you, I never got to sleep. It's they're, they're, The clock is running around 24 hours a day. The lights are always on. People's all, people are always working, walking the hallways. Uh, there's never downtime in a hospital. So I'm sure anyone who's, who's spent any time in the hospital knows what I'm talking about knows how annoying it is. And and when you're a spinal cord injury in the hospital, they come and every two hours they come and turn you like you're a fucking hamburger patty because they don't want you to get they don't want you to get bed sores. And I know bed sores are no joke and it's a serious matter for people with spinal cord injuries because once you get it, we're sitting on our ass all day. So once you have some kind of sore, the only choice you have is to sit on it or else you're going to lay on your stomach for like a, a month. Like that's that's the only way to cure a, a uh, pressure wound, pressure sore. So they're, they're really overactive in the hospital about pressure wounds. So they were coming in and turning me every two hours and then I think they spaced it out to every three right before I was discharged. So you can only imagine how much sleep you get or don't get with that attention coming in. Um, after those six months of inpatient, I was discharged. I moved back to my parents' house and I lived there while I went to outpatient rehab for another seven to eight months. Now, outpatient rehab was just me going um, twice a week for, uh, I think it was two, two one-hour therapy sessions. I did, I would do uh, occupational therapy, working with my hands, trying to get my fine motor function back, and then physical therapy, which is learning how to push my wheelchair again, um, learning how to get in and out of bed, learning how to do transfers, learning how to put my clothes back on, and occupational therapy is everything you do with your hands, learning how to brush my teeth again, learning how to feed myself again, learning how to cut my own food, learning how to take a piss again, learning how to wipe my own ass again, learning how to do anything again, because when you break your neck and you're broken down to that level, you're, you're a baby again. You, you can't do much for yourself, and so you rely a lot on well, while you're in the hospital, you rely on the doctors and the therapist, but when you're discharged, you have to rely on your family because that's that's your only choice. And um, I'm very lucky and thankful that I had a great family and friends all behind me the entire time. So I was able to keep a positive attitude. I was able to truck through it and, and tell myself, you know, I, I, I'm not gonna stop until I'm at a level that I, of independence that I'm happy at and that I'm comfortable at. And um, I'm kind of at a point where, I mean, I'm not, I, I, there, there are things I can still strive for and do and want to accomplish in life, but I'm happy where, I, where I've made it. I'm, I'm happy that I'm independent and I can do a lot of these things on my own. And um, it's, it's really rewarding to look back on it and like, at one point I couldn't, I, I was on a, uh, I had a trach, I had a ventilator, life support so I, I had to learn how to breathe for myself again and to go from zero being able to not even being able to breathe for yourself to now I'm living on my own working doing everything independently like a 26 year old man should is um, it's it's pretty fucking awesome um, and it's not something I look back on and it's kind of just like right now as I'm telling the story I'm like Wow, you, you did a pretty damn good job, so I'm going to pat myself on the back for that one. Uh, even though I could do better. I'm a little lazy now, here and then, so. That's the, uh, that's the story of how I got to where I am now. <laughs> and so, with this video blog podcast i i'm not sure what it's going to be in the end what it's gonna make of itself i i, I just want to share my stories my experiences I've, there's been so much crazy shit that has happened to me over the last five and a half years i'm talking hilarious things that i would never have imagined in in my life 
going down. There's so many stories. There's so there's tragic things that have happened. There's great things that have happened. I've seen I've seen some of the best of humanity come out, and I've seen some of the fucking worst people come out. I've seen it's just it's been a crazy journey, and I have all these stories and and things in my head that I want to share with 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 the world and. I figured this this is the best outlet to do so. Um, so that's what the future videos and episodes are going to be all about. They're not going to be about my my story story that I just shared with you, but they're going to be about um, what happened in rehab. You know, my when I was hallucinating on Ambien, um, maybe other things that happen that happen in, in everyday life. Um, some funny dating situations I've been in since I've been paralyzed. Um, some not so funny situations, some things that have really, really took a toll on me and some things that have lifted me up and made me feel like, well, I guess I'm not that much of a piece of shit because it could be a lot worse. So that's what I want to do with this and I really hope you guys are in on it and would like to learn more. Um, please comment, share, let me know any questions, anything you might want to know that I could share in the next episode. If not, I'll see you guys um, for episode two, which is going to be a pretty hilarious set of stories. So uh, join me for that, and uh, thanks for watching.